So, this is Go Code. This video is the part 2 of C++ tricks for competitive programming. In this video, we will go through these tricks. So, let's start. First is slow C in and C out. C in and C out are not slow by default. What make them slow is the synchronization with C buffer. If we use this at the beginning of our code, then we will make C in and C out as fast as scanf and printf. But we will no longer be able to use neither printf nor scanf. Like this, this is the beginning of our code. If we put this statement here, then our C in will become fast as scanf and C out will become fast as printf. Second is don't be afraid to use global variable. This means the maximum size of an array declared inside the main function is of the order of 10 to the power 6. But a global array size can be of order 10 to the power 7. Like this, here I make an array of the order of 10 to the power 7. Let's see what happens if I compile this code. So this code will give segmentation fault. So we cannot use a local array of this size. So let's see what happens if I make this array a global. This will work. This means we can make a global array whose size can be of the order of 10 to the power 7. Third is never code this if x can be greater than 31. This code will show undefined behavior. To use this we have to first cast 1 in long long like this. Let's see what happens if we don't cast 1 into long long and when x is greater than 31. So here you can see that the value of go code is 0 but we have declared here the value is 2 to the power 35. Now cast 1 into long long. This will work perfectly fine. So whenever we have to use this always cast 1 into long long. Fourth is get rid of if condition. Instead of writing if like this, we can also write if like this. So let's see whether this work or not. In this if condition, if 1 is less than 2, then go code 1 will increment by 1. And in this condition also, if 1 is less than 2, then go code 2 will increase by 1. So let's see what's the output. So here you can see that, so we can also write if condition like this. Fifth is never memorize value of pi. In some problem, we need the accurate value of pi. So we can use this statement to find the accurate value of pi. Let's see. Sixth is sort function. If we have to sort an array, then we can use an inbuilt sort function to sort an array and the syntax to sort the array is this. And if we have to sort a vector, then we can use this syntax. Let's sort some array and vector. Here AR is an array and VR is a vector and we take 5 elements in the array and in a vector then we will sort our array and our vector 
let's see the output so here you can see that the output of array and vector are same which is in sorted order seventh is lambda functions lambda functions are the functions that have body but doesn't have name simply a nameless functions so this is the syntax for the lambda function this is the lambda function to sort the array in decreasing order eighth is use m place back m place back work just like push back in case of a vector it is beneficial to use m place back instead of push back because m place back just add the value at the end of vector whereas push back stores value in temporary variable and then add the value at the end of a vector thus push back is slower than m place back so always use m place back instead of push back so these are some c++ tricks which you can use so let's stop here and we will meet in next video